technology which is creating voice right into game so you don't have to get a third party program you don't have to do it outside of the game this is all built right into a PC game and uh, this is implemented into EVE Online currently and uh, it's a new feature and this is very interesting stuff yeah so if you want to put a headset on we can talk to Nate back in the office okay. and uh, here, we'll pass him around okay. it's a push to talk feature so. Hey Nate, it's Jennifer. No problem. Nate's been in game all day. We pay him to sit back in the office in Boston and play Eve Online all day, and we talk to him. So, uh, oh, and he's doing double time on demos, so he's uh, <laughs> second life too. So he's got the job to have, apparently. He does. <laughs> and he's been playing. Uh, he's been playing Eve for four years now. Oh, really? So yeah. So I'm sure he was thrilled to have this implemented right into the game. Yes, <laughs> he was. He's been a big He's proponent on. of it. He's on. Oh, okay. Hey, Nate. I'm here with Jared and Ron. They're with NewGenGamers.com. Hello. Not much. Just learning all about this stuff. It seems like it. So, um, have you been mining all day, or what have you been doing uh, in Eve today? Okay. <laughs> that's great. It's so great that that's your job. So you can hear the sound quality. Yeah, this is really good sound quality yeah. and everything. So. Alright, thanks Nate. So you can see too when you're speaking. It tells you. It, it tells you and it tells you who's online. So he's basically your QA guy to just keep testing it out and see how it's working. He's actually our community manager, um, and he lets us know what the players are thinking, uh, what what they're asking for. Um, he puts out little fires if there's some misunderstanding about functionality, and he liaisons between uh, us and CCP to keep uh, the roadmap on track and, and uh, developed. Okay. So he does a great job. So that's EVE Online. That is really impressive. Th that is really, that's great sound quality compared to what I'm used to. I mean, in Xbox Live, the sound isn't anywhere near like that good. Yeah, yeah. You know. So. Now, uh, is this affected by your connection, um, like by your connection speed, how good of a quality you're going to get? Uh, naturally it is. Right. So whatever you're using at home, the better the connection, the better the quality will be. And just how the, that's the way the internet is with anything, right? Yeah. right? But um, because the codec is so small, it, it's limited. Yeah. You know, and, and we work with the game designers and the developers for customer support to let them know what to troubleshoot and when someone calls in and says, I can't get through, you know, router, firewall issues. Um, and if it goes beyond that, then they give us a call. So you guys made up your own codec for all this. Uh, yep. to, and um, so I imagine it's probably not very uh, very big file size going across to get all this. I mean, would you say 32-bit? Yep, 32-bit. Cool. Very small. 
And uh, you were also saying that this is run on an independent server from the game, so this has no effect on the gameplay, not uh, run on their servers at all. You guys handle all of that and just help integrate it into the game. That's right. So because so the game designers and publishers can concentrate on what they do best, and that's making the game. And we're communication experts, so that what, that's what we concentrate on, and we take all that worry away. Right. Keep things online. And that seems to be a growing thing in the industry. Like all these people are taking certain aspects that enhance your gameplay, they're concentrating on that, while the game developers just concentrate on making a quality game right. for us. Right, it takes a village. Yeah. So, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and if you want to come over here, I'll show you a little bit of Second Life. Okay. And we've got a couple of little things different in Second Life. Thank you. Good etiquette to, to okay. shut down what you were doing. So the UI in Second Life is different, but there's also a couple of features in Second Life just based on the, the role that the virtual world plays. Mm -hmm. There's 3D positional sound, there is um, attenuation. So we're going to go in, we're going to talk to Nate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, that, well that's interesting, the positional sound, so if someone's off to your right, you're going to hear them speaking. You're going to hear right. them on the right. That's very so cool. So if you're in a game where there's combat, like a first person shooter, and someone's like, he's behind you, you'll know. Well, yeah, well, or he's over there, you know, or I'm over here, you're going to know where they are. Right, yeah, that's very cool. Right, and then the attenuation, you go away, you come closer, you're going to be able to do that. That's so, really yeah, so you're, you're, you're not just hearing them, you're hearing where they are. That's great. Exactly, and it, help, it's, uh, it adds to the immersion. What we have here is a phone booth, and one of the functions is you can call from in-world to a cell phone or a landline. Oh, wow. So that's not widespread, but it's one of our little tricks we've got in Second Life to show off. Oh, because yeah. we show off. Could, so, you, um, there, could you call his telephone? Yep. Okay. Yep, so at the end we'll do that. All right, cool. Okay. Oh, wow. So uh, here we have a little window down here. Um, and I bring that up. And that tells me who's in my area. So uh, we've got Tog and Hox and Chills Mokeeve and Duke Davison are in this area. And they're equipped to speak with voice. And I can adjust each of their volumes individually or mute them oh, wow. you know you find someone annoying right so you have some control now is that uh does that display anyone that's available to chat or is that done through like a friends list no nope, that's um we're in this area and whoever's enabled voice appears there okay now uh in the communicate window this is my friends list okay, okay? And I can open a channel direct to them. So they can be in a different part of the world, and I can call them and speak to them. Oh, wow. So you have that capability as well. Okay? So you want to hop on and hear the 3D and attenuation? Or Ron? Give it a go. He picked up the camera. I'm the, I'm the camera guy. Okay. I, uh, Jared so plays go. it, I tape it. <laughs> There's Nate. Yeah. Hey Nate, it's us again. Hello. <laughs> so I'm telling uh, I'm telling Jared and Ron about 3D and the attenuation. So could you uh, would you mind talking telling us about your Toyota Prius and I can show them the uh, 3D sound? I get my certain time. See when uh, there's speech going on. Uh -oh. There's little bubbles above their head showing you that they're speaking. Not here. Oh. Right. The wire yeah, two of them. Yeah. So you can see he's yeah. typing. We also have the the, um, the gestures that are programmed in. So let's see here. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap the video up here, but uh, as you can see, this is Vivox technology being used in Second Life, and you saw on EVE Online, and I'm sure there's going to be a slew of other games that are going to take advantage of this technology as uh, competitive online gaming and just online communities grow, and uh, this is a great opportunity for people to keep in touch and talk with each other.
So, all right, thank you very much, Jennifer. Thank you. And uh, glad you could stop by. This is great technology. Yeah, thank you. We're, we're really excited about it. So get it, get it out, and you know, use it in your games and even Second Life, and it's going to be coming out in a lot of other games too. And if your most popular game does not support it, demand that they have Vivox technology, and that uh, you want to talk to your buddies and talk some smack or just hang out.